Hello and welcome. In the previous lesson, we described the example problem of a duct with turning vanes and briefly discussed the corresponding workflow for optimization using the ANSYS OptiSlang process integration and design optimization software. After a simulation process is set up with appropriate input and output parameters, the first step of optimization using an OptiSlang application is to perform process integration. In this lesson, we will learn about process integration in OptiSlang application which automates the simulation process so that hundreds of designs may be evaluated. Let's get started. Before we begin, ensure that the provided input files are copied to a working folder. Launch the standalone OptiSlang application and create a new empty project. Save the project in the working directory that is not cloud synchronized with the name turningvane.opf. A corresponding turningvane.opd folder will be created automatically by the OptiSlang application which contains all OptiSlang results and solver outputs. Besides, there is also a turningvane.opr folder created automatically by the OptiSlang where all referenced files can be stored. This would also allow an easier migration of a project. So the recommended best practice is to save all the input files in the folder with the extension .opr. Process integration automates the manual simulation process which generally starts with geometry modifications in ANSYS Discovery 3D product simulation software followed by mesh generation in ANSYS Fluent software's meshing mode and solution simulation in ANSYS Fluent software's solver mode. Performing this step involves setting up of a valid process chain defining the workflow of the whole simulation process which is then automated. OptiSlang application offers wizards which help us create a new project or workflow. In the wizards pane, you can see multiple wizards to set up a sensitivity, optimization or robustness analysis. To start, we have to define a process chain using the solver wizard. Drag and drop the solver wizard from the wizards pane into the empty scenery pane. The feasible areas where it can be dropped are highlighted in green. Select ANSYS Discovery application from the list in the solver page. When prompted, browse to the working folder, select and open the turning vane discovery input file. This may take a few seconds. OptiSlang application detects any defined output and input parameters and lists them as input parameters and responses in the parameterization tab along with the definitions. Here, the two input parameters defined in the input file are displayed in the parameters listing. Drag and drop these parameters as illustrated to register them as input parameters for the optimization analysis. Please note the units of the parameters so that the appropriate values can be entered as parameter bounds in the next step. Click on next to go to the parameterize inputs window. By default, the parameters are set to the type real and to a continuous resolution. Typically, the default values for range are minus 10% and plus 10% of the reference values. However, this case is an exemption since the reference value is zero. In the range column, set the limits as minus 0.1578 radian and plus 0.1578 radian for both veins. This implies that in this parametric analysis, the rotation of both of the veins is contained between minus 0.1578 and plus 0.1578 radian, which is about plus or minus 9 degree. And this defines the span of the design space. Once the ranges are set, click next to display the criteria window. We will set this up later when we have the response values. Click next and then finish to complete the wizard. Upon finishing the setup, a parametric system will be created with only the ANSYS discovery software node. Rename the turningvane.cas to parametric solver system as shown. 
A good practice is to run the parametric system after each node is added. If there is any failure in execution, this will help in identifying the problematic node, especially in cases where a large number of nodes are involved. A successful execution of the run will be indicated by a check mark against the node and the parametric solver system title. To complete the parametric system, we must add ANSYS Fluent Meshing and ANSYS Fluent Solver nodes. The modules pane lists all the algorithms and nodes that can be used to create parametric workflow and they are divided into different categories. To add the ANSYS Fluent Measure node, find the node under Integrations in the Process Chain Elements category. Alternatively, you can search for the node in the search bar. Now drag it next to the ANSYS Discovery node in the Parametric System pane. Hover over the connection line until it starts to blink green and then release the node. This will place the ANSYS Fluent Measure node as a successor to ANSYS Discovery node. Connections are used to manage the data flow between two nodes and the direction of the connection defines the data flow. Connections are also used to trigger a successor node when all the predecessors are ready. We can adjust the placement of the nodes in Parametric Solver System window as needed. Double click on ANSYS Fluent Measure node which will open the ANSYS Fluent Measure dialog box. Browse to the corresponding mesh file turningvein.msh, select and load it as shown. This may take a few seconds. There are no inputs or outputs defined, thus these fields will stay empty. Click OK to close the window. For brevity, we will not execute a test run here and do it after completing the parametric system setup. Next, we will add the ANSYS Fluent Solver node to the parametric system using the same steps as we did to add the ANSYS Fluent Measure node. Drag and place the ANSYS Fluent Solver node as a successor to the ANSYS Fluent Measure node. Adjust the nodes if needed. Double click on the ANSYS Fluent Solver node and browse to the corresponding ANSYS Fluent case file turningvein.cas.h file and open it. This may take a few seconds. Upon opening, the output parameter defined in ANSYS Fluent Solver will be loaded and displayed under the Outputs list in the Parameterization tab. Drag and drop this parameter under Responses pane as illustrated here. By dragging output parameter to responses, we are registering this parameter as a response value for the optimization analysis. Now go to the settings tab and set for example the parallel processes to 4. This should be chosen in accordance with the hardware and software license available for the study. Click apply and OK to close the window. Once all the integration nodes in the parametric system are set, we will now define the criteria for the objective of the optimization analysis. Double click on the header of the parametric system pane to open the parametric system dialog box. Notice the parameter bounds defined for the veins in the parameter tab. Go to the criteria tab, drag the response value to objective and drop it over the minimize option when it appears as shown. This sets the criteria that the objective of the optimization is to minimize the output parameter, that is, the pressure drop across the duct by rotating the pair of turning veins. Click OK to close the window. We have set up the workflow for the parametric system. However, we must provide additional description to the connections between nodes. To open the dialog box to describe the connection between ANSYS Discovery to ANSYS Fluent Measure, Double click on the connector node between the two. In this current connection, the parameter values are passed on from the discovery to fluent measure. We want to add another connection in which the geometry is passed from ANSYS discovery software to ANSYS fluent measure for meshing. For this, connect O geometry path to I geometry file path via drag and drop as shown. This implies that the geometry output of the ANSYS Discovery node is made the input for the ANSYS Fluent Measure 
so that ANSYS Fluent Meshing Tool can take it up to create the corresponding volume mesh. Click OK to confirm. Similarly, we need to make the mesh output of the ANSYS Fluent Mesher node an input to the ANSYS Fluent Solver node. This implies that the solver tool will use the updated mesh to run the simulation which in turn provides us with the response values. This is achieved by connecting O mesh file path to I mesh file path via drag and drop as shown. Click OK to close the window. We have set up the parametric system in which different design parameter variations based on the parameter bounds defined will be solved using the automated simulation process. The automated simulation process includes creation of modified geometry, mesh generation, and solving to obtain the corresponding output parameter. When the workflow setup is finished, start a test run of the parametric system. As mentioned before, the successful execution of the run will be indicated by the check marks. The output of the run can be checked in the result designs tab of the parametric system. Please note that the reference values are used in this evaluation. If the test run is successfully completed, further parametric studies can be set up using wizards. Let's summarize what we have learned in this lesson. We focused on process integration, which involves automating our simulation process to set up a parametric system. We started by creating a new ANSYS OptiSlang project and understood how to use the solver wizard to establish a parametric solver system with the ANSYS Discovery Integration node. We then connected the ANSYS Fluent Mesher node and the ANSYS Fluent Solver node to complete the workflow. We also defined the parameter bounds and the criteria for the optimization analysis. These steps helped us create an automated workflow in which different design variations can be simulated to produce corresponding output values needed for optimization process. With this, let's wrap up this lesson.